Father, I pray. Bless your word this morning. Anoint your word. Let it empower. Let it encourage. I pray that your word is not like a donut covered with sugar. But I pray that your word is like a piece of meat hearty. Half cooked. Keeps the blood pumping. I pray that your word, Father, is like salad. Strengthens us. Amen. Builds us. Amen. Father, give us the good stuff. Give us the protein. Give us the stuff that our spirits become bulky, not fat. Give us the stuff for our spirit to become strong, to resist the enemy, but not become weak, to run away. Hallelujah. Bless your word. Bless your word. It's a sword. Teach us how to use it. Teach us how to swing it. Because when we learn, we know how to battle. We know how to fight. Because victory doesn't come without a battle. So we need to learn how to use this weapon. Let your word and power grow us. Fire us up, Father. Bless us, Lord. Anoint your word. Anoint the hearts of your people. Let it be of great soil so when the seed drops in, that it will remain there and die in their hearts and they will grow because the seed needs to die before it grows. Bless us. In your mighty name, Jesus, I pray everybody say, Amen. Amen. John 5, chapter uh, verses 1 to 14. <laughs> Let us read together. Can you everybody see the screen up here? Yeah. If you can't see it, put your glasses on. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you still can't see it, then come forward. Come sit in the front. Come sit in the front. Hallelujah. Let us read together. Let us read. Wait, wait. There's only a few of us. I know all of us went to school. Uh, and we all started reading books like Harry McCleary. Uh, Hallelujah. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. So let us read again, nice and loud, everybody. Let us read. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus came out to Jerusalem. Now there is Jerusalem, but she came at the pool, which is Lord of the Hebrew, and having five approaches. Wait. The best way to pronounce that word is the B S D A. If you don't know how to pronounce it, then go B D A S T A. That's the only way to pronounce that word. Now, this word means house of mercy. I don't want to pass by because I don't want you just to read it thinking they're they're just words. No, I want to explain it to you so that you can understand the meaning of that word. Uh, uh, be the star is the house of mercy, the house of grace. But then there's a flip coin to it, which I don't want to go to the flip coin. All I want you to know is that it's the house of mercy and the house of grace. Having five, what does it say there? Having five porches, porches meaning that there were five shaded areas. There were five sections that had a nice shade under it and in this five porches it was close to the temple it was close to the house of the Lord hallelujah I want you to understand and follow through with me with this is it getting hot in here yes. it's getting hot in here <laughs> so take off my jacket can we just turn those off please? nice uh. House of mercy. Everyone say house of mercy. House of mercy. You're in the house of mercy. Huh? Hallelujah. You're in the house of grace. Hallelujah. You're in the covering of the Lord. Five, five porches of shade. The covering of God. Let's continue. For an angel. Wait, listen to that. See this part here. This was fascinating to me. 
The reason why it was fascinating to me is it says that the water, it, it, it has to be a, a, a change. Go back to verse 3. Go back to verse 3. In these days, a great multitude of sick, sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. Everybody say moving of the water. Moving of the now water. we go to verse 4. It turns around and says, For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. You know, in another translation, it says troubled waters. In another translation, it says troubled waters. It, it, it really stunned me because when I'm sitting there and the Bible says stirring up the water, I looked at it and I said, man, in our lives we have troubled, troubled times. But I want you to get the scripture right. Let's go to verse 5. Then whoever stepped into in first after the stirring of the water was made what? Was made of whatever. Sometimes the stirring of our lives causes a healing in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes troublesome in our lives bring a healing into our lives. This is what this word came to me. God was saying, when I stir your life, it's for your good. When I stir up that water in your heart, it's not me trying to break you. It's not me trying to cause you to run away. It's me bringing a healing to a disease that needs to be healed in Jesus' mighty name. When you look at disease, for me, it can be sicknesses of life and it can be the sins of this life. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. speaking excuses yeah. a lot of theologians say that this man was crippled it doesn't say that here it says he was in infirmity meaning that this guy wasn't born with it but he was injured by something something caused him to be in such a place at that time so don't get that mixed up don't think that because you're going to understand what I mean when we come to the end of the scripture this guy wasn't born with it. Something he did caused him to be there for 38 years. That's why the Bible didn't say from the birth, from his life, from the beginning, he came out of his mama's wound with the sickness. No, he received it during his journey. And in 38 years, he's been sitting where there is a blessing, but he was just full of excuses. How many of us make a lot of excuses? Amen. Look to your neighbor and tell them, are you an excuse maker? Yeah, are you an excuse maker? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I, I have one of my daughters. I have one of my daughters that every time we get home and the house is messy. And, um, and, and we turn around and we go, all right, everybody get our house in order. We're going to clean. I have this one daughter that turns around and goes, oh, I need to go to it at that. Oh, Every time. And then when she goes to the bathroom, I'm fine. I said, baby, go to the bathroom. It's fine. She goes in the bathroom. She's there until we finish cleaning. <laughs> then once the vacuum stops, the dishes stop banging in the kitchen. Then we heard the flush and then she comes out. And then you have all my girls in the house and the boys were like, far out. She always does that excuse. She always makes that excuse. She always makes it. How many are excuse makers? I can't come to Kingsman because of this and this and this. I can't come to uh, to the VM sisters because of this and this and this. I can't come to Audacious Youth because I have this and I have that. And, I, and then it's become a common thing that the next Amen. the next time uh, I can't, the next time uh, I can't, the next time I can't. It's become now a normal thing Amen. that you don't see it as an excuse. 
but you see it as something totally different. Let me say this to you. Excuses. Your excuse will always keep you in the season of failure. Hallelujah. So if you are an excuse maker, maker, listen carefully. You are stuck in your season of failure. Because excuses stop you from moving forward. Excuses stop you from coming to things that help build you. Let me say this to you. What's the purpose of our kingsmen on Wednesdays? It's to build our men. So if you don't turn up to our kingsmen, are you getting built? That's why you keep falling down. How about our VM sisters? VM is for the purpose of fellowship, building our women to be wahine doors is what they call it. Wahine warriors. How can you be a warrior if you don't turn up to be empowered, to be encouraged, to be uplifted? This is the purpose of things happening through the week for, for the house of God. Even our youth, I challenge our parents, draw your children to learn. It's not our job to teach your children, but it's our job to try and empower them with the Word of God. That's why every Friday we have our youth happening here. We have our leaders coming up to build, to encourage, to grow our children. How can, we, uh, how can our children grow more into God when we rather them grow more into things of this world? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like I said in the beginning, let's have something hearty. Amen. Give you something hearty. I'm not going to coat anything because my concern is I want to tell you the truth. That we're missing out on what God has placed in front of us to build us, to grow us, to empower us. How many of us are like this man? 38 years in the season of just sitting there. Oh, someone else came and oh, oh someone else came. I, I tried, I tried, oh, someone else came. How many, how many years have you been saying that same lingo? Oh, someone else, oh, someone else. Look to your neighbor and say, kill the excuses or the excuses will kill you. Your excuses will always keep you in the season of failure. Let's read chapter 8. Let's go to chapter 8. Everybody read. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was laid down, stood up on his bed and walked. And that bed was the Sabbath. And the Jews For Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. 14. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Listen to that. Listen to that. Why did Jesus say to him, Sin no more? So it was a sin that brought him into the first place. You see where I'm talking from? See the way the wordings that have worded it that people may misunderstand that this man was sick from the birth. No, he wasn't sick from the birth. You find it at the words at the end. Jesus said, sin no more now. Because if you do it again, what's going to happen? Oh. Hello? Now I want you to notice where Jesus finds this man. I love this part. Who was made whole, he was at. He was made whole. Where did Jesus find him? Where did Jesus find him? Look it says, afterwards when, when Jesus departed from him. Afterwards Jesus found him in the church. Church. Hallelujah. After Jesus heals him out there. Then Jesus comes back around and found him in church. This is why I said to you the importance of your house. The importance of Sunday coming into the house of the Lord. Jesus does a miracle for you out there, but Jesus wants you to find you in his house. Hallelujah. Jesus is going to come visiting again to make sure that you are in his 
house. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Jesus finds him in the church. That's where we should be. When Jesus does something great and awesome in our lives, we should be in the house of the Lord shouting amen. Shouting thank you, Jesus. And I want you to notice that last statement there that says, sin no more. Everybody say, sin no more. Lest a worse thing come unto thee. He says, you're made whole. Sin no more. Don't go back to it. What you were doing that put you in that situation in the first place, that broken situation in the first place where you had to be made whole, don't go back. That brings us to the first point of our sermon. First point of our sermon is don't go back. Look to your neighbor and say, don't go back. Come on, look to your neighbor and tell them, don't go back. Don't go back. Because I believe that uh, there's some that are, you know, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. There are some that are in that position of, uh, I I'm here to remind you where Christ pulled you out from. And I'm here to remind you that you shouldn't go back to it. Don't go back to that same hurt. Don't go back to that same uh, uh, violentness, that same anger, that same situation. God pulled you out of it. Why would you want to go back to it? Hallelujah. Turn to somebody else and say, never go back. We're going to focus on that verse 14. Verse 14 says, here was a man that after he's made whole was found in church. Here's a man that encountered Jesus and Jesus says to him, don't go back to doing what got you broken in the first place. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. If you get mad at me, please, we have an altar calling afterwards. <laughs> Because I want to remind you that that filthy place where we were at wasn't a good place. Not a good place. And I don't want you to make your way backwards. We're people that move forward. You know when you read the armor of God, Apostle Paul names all the armor of God. Eh? He, he names the shoes. He names the belt. He names the breastplate. He names the shield. He names the sword. He names the hat. But he never mentioned something to protect your back. <laughs> oh. Everything that he mentions is everything that is forward because the intention of the armor is to protect someone that's moving forward. Yes. You know the time you die is when you turn your back. Once you turn your back, you're vulnerable. The enemy starts shooting his arrows. Wow. Nothing's there to protect you because we're not people that are meant to go backwards. We're people that are meant to go forward. Everybody say forward. 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 Stop going backwards. That's why you get killed. Hallelujah. How many of you know sin has consequences? Say amen. amen. And so we have to break the old habits. We have to get out of our old ways in life. If you want to see change in your life, you must never go back to the way things were. There's always going to be something calling, trying to get you to go back to the way things were. Perhaps you had been hanging around the wrong crowd and then you got away from them. But one day, all of a sudden, you start missing that vibe. You start missing that dirty talk. You start missing that laughing. You start missing those joking, uh, joking around. You start missing it. All the things that you used to do and it was filthy, but you missed it. You know the problem? Too much Facebook. Too much Instagram. You know why? Because you're following your unsaved friends. What happens when you see your unsaved friends like itch, 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 itch. Woo, woo, woo. You're like, oh, I used to do that. And what happens? You rekindle the fire that Jesus is trying to put out. Amen. Hallelujah. You miss it. Oh, I miss it. I miss hiding in the dark. <laughs> I miss hanging on that corner with my mates and just holding the bottle and just. <laughs> I miss it. 
Hallelujah. There will always be a call. The enemy doesn't stop calling. Look at the King David. Look at uh, uh, David when he was standing with Goliath. The Bible says every morning, every there was a certain time Goliath comes out and he calls. He calls and he calls. And what happens? The children of Israel start to get scared. They hide. There's always going to be a call. Amen. That's going to bring something back. That's going to spark that. That's why you got to get rid of it. Look to your neighbor and say, get rid of it. Get rid of it. And you know the most funniest thing is? The funniest thing for us is we forget how filthy that place is, but you only remember the laughters. Have you ever had that time where you go, oh, that was funny. You go, oh gosh, the good old times. <laughs> good old times. When we used to sit around that fire and, and we were just drinking. Oh, the good old times, partying in our garage. But you forget the, the arguments afterwards. Yes. Yes. Amen. You forget the waking up in the morning and all of a sudden, ah, well, I told you, so don't spend that money, but you spend it. Get out of the house. Get out of the house. I don't want you anymore. I don't love you anymore. You forget all of that, but you remember the, oh, the good old times. Amen. See, that, isn't that funny? Isn't that funny when you talk about when we talk about our past, we turn around and we remember the funny part, but the devil doesn't want you to remember the filthiness. The moment where you try to kill yourself, the moment where you were depressed, the moment where you were out of money, the moment where your family was breaking, the devil doesn't want you to remember that. He just makes you remember the good old times. <laughs> And he, then he starts to come back. And you're like, ah. <laughs> and then when you get back into that circle again, bang, back to the same thing. Amen. Where's your Jesus? I told you, you were praying every day, praying every day. Now look at you, now look at you. Amen. Everything starts coming back. You're like, Jesus, what happened? Jesus looking at you going, well, I never done anything. Amen. I didn't do anything. I only said to you to keep going forward. You were the one that allowed the enemy to draw you back to the same yes. pit I pulled you out from. Look to your neighbor and say, don't go back. Don't go back. When God makes you whole, don't go back to the things that robbed you of your peace. Then it comes to my second point. My second point is, put it up. I can't go back. <laughs> Everybody say, I won't go back. There's too much in stake for you. You worked hard for this. Hallelujah. You fought hard for this. You fought hard for this peace. You fought hard for this joy. You fought hard for this love. You fought hard for this marriage. You fought hard for your children. You fought hard for this. Amen. You can't afford to go back. Yes. Rome wasn't built in one day, but it took one day to destroy it. Yes. That's right. That love, that peace, that faith, that joy, that new love in your family, it took ages to build. You came through hardship. You came through sweat. You came through tears. You came through hurt. You came through a lot of things that you can't go back to it. Amen. Can't. I said to my daughters, I said to Mercy, Mercy's my oldest daughter. She's, she's the headache. <laughs> I turn around to her and I said to Mercy, Mercy, whenever she says, Dad, I'm going out with my friends. Can I go out? We're going to night market. Dad, can I go uh, movies with my friend? Can I go? I said to my daughter this, Mercy, trust. Trust took years to build, to be, to build it. But it would only take you to make that one wrong choice to start from square one again. Hallelujah. To build it up again. The devil doesn't need much to break it. He only needs you to make that choice and then a bang, 
everything that's up there that God wanted you to have. Look to your neighbor again and say, we can't go back. Now let me get hearty. Can I get hearty with you? Can I get real with you? Amen. I'm going to go to the Bible and speak to you about someone that goes backwards. What does the Bible talk about? Turn your Bibles to Proverbs 26. Look at that, 26 verse 11. Let's get real. The Bible says, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool repeats his stupidity. It's not my words. You'll find that in the word of God. As a dog returns to his vomit, so does a fool repeat over and over what he does. Well, we don't want to be like dogs, eh? Look to your neighbor and say, I'm not a dog. Have you ever heard your mom and dad go, oh, if I taught a dog, the dog would be smarter than you. Amen. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard your parents go, oh, excuse the language I speak in the Samoan. says, If I was to teach a dog, oh gosh. Look to your neighbor and say, I'm not a dog. I'm God's creation. I'm a masterpiece. We don't want to be like dogs going back to our vomit. And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, we probably have all done it sometime in our lives. Where we have been delivered from something and for some reason you find yourself going back to the very thing you were delivered from. God delivered you from an addiction and you went back to that same addiction. He delivered you from that troublesome situation and... We end up back at that same troubled situation. Delivered you from a uh, domestic violent relationship and we go back to the same domestic violent relationship. Delivered us from a drinking problem and we go back to the same drinking problem. Yes. Yeah. I like what DMX said, hey, Lord, give me a sign. I really need to talk to you, Lord. Because my walk has been hard. I know you've been walking with me and he turns around and he goes, you know, even though I'm walking and talking with you, but I still need you. Amen. Yes. You know, why, why do I say this and why, why am I bringing this up? Is because look at what you have worked so hard with God and you're just going to throw that away to go back to the same mess that we came from. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking to a single person. I'm talking to everyone. When I read this word, that just armored me up to say, man, I ain't looking back. Amen. If you knew my past, oh man, I ain't going back to that life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Why would you go back? And he describes it here. He says a dog, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool returns to his folly. Speaks of one who does not learn from their experience. It speaks of one that doesn't learn from their mistakes. It speaks of one that continues to return to their old familiar ways. This is what Proverbs is talking about. It's talking about a person that just sees the mistakes but keeps doing it. It hurts. It hurts God but you still go through it. Listen to this. This passage demonstrates that when destructive behavior continues to be repeated, there was never a real change of heart in the one who continues returning to his yesterday. Amen. I love this quote from a wise person. One wise person said, History repeats itself endlessly for those who are willing to learn from their past. That's why history is laid. So that us, we don't repeat that history. You see the slavery thing that is happening all the time? You know why it keeps repeating? You know why it keeps repeating? Because they haven't learned to let go and to forgive. 
You know why it keeps repeating? Because they keep going back to it. That's why it's always there because we keep going back to it. This is why this wise man said that's why history was laid down. So that every time you read it, you learn from the struggles of the past so that we don't go back and do the same thing. Can I hear you say amen? amen? Most people would learn from their mistakes if they weren't so busy denying them. <laughs> I don't have a drinking problem. I don't have an anger problem. You got anger issues, mate. <laughs> That's why your wife says, he's mental when he gets mad. He's mental. Or the husband says, she's mental when she gets mad. She's mental. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. No, pastor. I don't have it. I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. Listen to that. Most people would learn from their mistakes. You would learn from it. If only you would stop denying it. Stop denying that there's a problem at home. Stop denying that you're going through something. Stop denying it. Yes. Bring it up. Don't let the devil settle. Tell yourself, God, there's a problem at home. God, there's a problem with me. I have an addiction that I need to break out from. I, I have to get out of this. God, oh, own up to it. I love what Toby Mac, I love this guy Toby Mac. He's my singer. I love his songs and he's a, he's a good writer. This is what Toby Mac said that I love. He says, please don't ever go back to things you had to pray your way out of. Please don't go back to the things that you prayed hard to get out from. This is why things keep repeating because you keep going back to it. Stop living a life that is on replay. Amen. Are we all right? Everyone all right? Let the enemy uh, take your focus away. Because God's word is for you to stay on track. <laughs> Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell them again, don't go back. Let's look at this. I spoke to you about a dog returning to his vomit. Look at what Second Peter's chapter two verses twenty-two says. Let's go to Second Peter's. You got it at the back there. That's what I said to you to watch out for our scriptures, babe. Find it and put it up there, please. Don't go back. Second Peter's two verses twenty-two. It speaks about. It says, "Like a soul returning to the mud." You know what a soul was. It's a pig. The Bible says you see a pig when the farmer takes the pig in and washes it after he gives it a nice clean with all the shampoos and all the stuff and dries up the pig. What happens to the pig? It goes back to the same mud. Look at that. Peter puts it together. But it has happened to them according to the true pro uh, Proverbs. A dog returns to his own vomit and a so having washed to her wellowing in the mirror. Amen. It's talking about a pig. You see, the Bible is not, is not gentle with us. The Bible is turning around saying, when you know my truth, when you have been set free from Jesus Christ, why would you want to go back? And if you do go back, look at the animals he compares you to. Amen. Look to your neighbor and tell them I ain't a pig. I said to you before you ain't a dog so don't return back to your vomit now I'm talking to you now you ain't a pig stop going back to the same mess I, I encourage one of the youth members I turned around and I said to them we all make mistakes but when we make a mistake take the message but leave the mess alone the message is what's going to help you in the future but don't take the mess and the mistake because you'll end up in the same thing again, again, and again. Are you alright? Look to your neighbor and tell them, are you alright? <laughs> but I want us to do something as a church. Look to your neighbor and tell them, we've got to go forward. Hallelujah. 
That's the only way we can go is keep going forward. Never backwards. If we want to see change in our lives, if we want to see change in our homes, if we want to see change in our children, if we want to see change happening around us, we've got to keep moving forward. Let's look at Philippians. I'm almost finished. Philippians 3 verses 13, 14. Let's read it together. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Press towards the goal for the price of the upward call of God is in Jesus Christ. Oof. Look to someone and tell them press on. We've got to keep going forward. We've got to go forward. We can't go backwards. We never go backwards to the old relationships. We never go backwards to the old way of thinking. We don't go backwards to the old way of looking. We don't go backwards to the old way of acting. We never go back to find the old things in our closets. Amen. We want to get rid of those things. Everybody say, I want to get rid of it. I want to go forward. I'm forgetting those things. Look at what Apostle Paul says. I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. Here's one thing I know I do. I want to do. I want to forget things. I want to forget what's behind me. I need to forget what's behind me. I need to reach forth. I need to reach forward unto the things which are before me. How many of you know if you don't let go of the things that are behind you, it's going to greatly affect and challenge those things that are before you? You want to move forward, but you're still holding on to the past. It's going to ruin what God has in store for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to get a bit touchy here. I'm going to get a bit touchy here. I'm going to talk to our, our couples that have divorced. There's a reason why you divorced. I'm saying, let's be real. Amen. Learn from what has happened there to fix what's happening here. Let go of it so that new things can spring forth. Look at what Apostle Paul is saying. You cannot, you cannot think that the new things in front of you is going to be good if you're still holding on to the old things. It's going to ruin it. It's going to ruin it. Hello? Amen. You alright? This is why I say uh, to the young, young adults, it's important for you to come to Kingsman. I always say this, my son asks me, Dad, why do I have to go to Kingsman? These guys talk about gang banging stuff. These guys talking about all this broken stuff. I said to him, son, because you are growing up to be in a position they're going to be in. Learn from our mistakes so your future can become great. Amen. Amen. This is why I challenge young ladies, go to VM sister. Learn from the ladies when they talk, when they cry. I just want to go, I want to go to Mike to teach me how to box so I can knock this guy out. <laughs> go and listen. Listen to him. Don't laugh at their emotions. Don't laugh at their stories. But listen, take notes so that that way you know how to identify a good man. Yeah. 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 Our mistakes is your stepping stone to greatness. Hallelujah. This is why it's important to tell your testimony. You can speak it, but don't dwell in it. It's your story is to tell, to empower someone, not to entertain you. Not to remind you. No, no. When the devil comes back to try and remind you, you look at the devil and say, Satan, I stay there no more. But my story Hallelujah. is to help someone. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? Yes. I said to you, we're going to have something hearty. So enjoy. Because after this, I'll bring some dessert. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> I'm going to say that again. How many of you know if you don't let go of the things that are behind you, 
it's going to greatly affect the challenge and challenge those things that are before you. Don't allow the devil to sit there and take you through a dramatized version of your old mistakes. That's not you anymore. And you don't go back. You don't go back. No, it doesn't look good and it doesn't feel good. All of us have a past. We just don't live there anymore. That's a good one. Write it down. Remind yourself. Yeah, I have a past, but I don't live there no more. Yeah, I've made mistakes, but I'm not doing those mistakes anymore. Yeah, I've done these things, but I'm not going to do it again. When you're living this life as a Christian, the enemy is going to attack you all in the... It's going to attack you every time in one place. And this is what God placed in my heart. You know where God... You know where the devil attacks you? You know where he attacks you? One place. The mind. Joyce Meyer says the battlefield is the mind. Love that woman. I read a book. I love reading sometimes. I read a book. And this book was written by a, a, a man named uh, Joel Osteen. Everybody say Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. And I read a book that he wrote like this. Joel Osteen wrote a book that says, Think better, live better. Hallelujah. Think better, live better. When you're living this Christian life, the enemy is going to attack you in your mind right up here. If he can affect how you think, he will affect how you live. If he can affect how you think, he will affect how you live. Amen. Have you noticed that, men? Yes. Let me speak to our men. Have you noticed that when, uh, when the enemy tampers and hear about your partner, the trust issue starts to happen? Where have you been? Why are you talking to that man? <laughs> are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. Here. You're talking with a woman that's empowering you. Honey, you are doing good. And God is good. And you're like standing there, but your eyes are like, where is he? Where is he going? <laughs> Nothing is sitting in you because the devil is playing in his playground. You're allowing him. This is why trust issues happen. This is why dishonesty happens. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> because this is the greatest battlefield is our mind. Your battle doesn't happen out here. Everything that happens outside of you is caused by your thinking. Yes. Yeah. If you say to yourself you're a failure, your whole journey is going to be a failure. If you say to yourself, I'm not worthy, your whole journey is going to be, uh, you're, not an un you're not a worthy person. Amen. Mind. Everybody tap your mind. mind. Say mind. mind. If he can affect how you think, he can affect how you live. That's why the most powerful thing you can do as a Christian is to renew your mind. Everyone say renew. Renew, renew your mind. Renew the way you think. Don't go back to it. Sometimes it feels like it's easier to go back because of the challenges that await you by going forward. Yeah. This is why many people want to go back. Because to you, it's better to go back because I don't want to face God. I don't want to face this what's in front of you. Remember when I said to you uh, the picture that I showed about sanctification? That when God comes and touches something you don't want to touch, all of a sudden you're like, I'd rather go back, God. I'd, I'd rather go back. I don't want you to touch that area. I'd rather go back and do, I, I'm, I'm fine with getting hurt. I'm fine with crying all the time. I'm fine with what's happening. Just I just don't want you to touch this. God is looking at you going, but how are we going to move you forward if you ain't going to allow me to get that out of you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh gosh, almost finished. Everyone all right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. Mm. Don't let the enemy get into your mind. Why? Because he doesn't want you to reach that place where you've been called. That place where you've been anointed. And I love it because Paul, he describes it like this. He says, I'm reaching forth. I'm reaching forth. Everybody say reaching forth. Reaching forth. I'm reaching forth. Everybody say I'm reaching forth. Everybody say I'm reaching forth. Reaching forth. I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. Here's how he describes how the process is going to be. Verse 14, I press. Everybody say I press. I press. Towards. Towards. 
the mark. Everybody say, I press towards the mark. You have to press towards that mark. And when you press towards something, it's always because opposition is facing you. You press towards it regardless of what's coming your way. You press towards it. I'm going forward. And sometimes it may be just a little step at a time. Pressing forward. I, I love this. When I looked at it, every, when we say press forward, everybody has this mentality of keep going forward. Keep going forward. No. The key word is press. You're pushing something. Have you ever seen that thing at the training where you put weights on and you press on it? Sleep. Press means a, a sled, eh? A sled? A sled with a weight on it. And you press it. See, pressing means that you're pushing against something. Amen. You're going in. How do we open a door? You, you, you know, you kind of mm. press onto it. You push it to open that door. Paul says that I press on. I press forward. Meaning that regardless, the difficult, the hard times, I don't care, Lord. I, all, all I know, Father, is that something good's going to happen. I'm going to have a new relationship. My marriage is going to be good. My finances are going to be good. My kids are going to grow up good. Lord, I'm going to keep pressing forward until I reach the goal. Hit the mark. Look at what Apostle Paul says. I press on till I get to that mark. Hallelujah. And Matthew 26 speaks about Jesus when he was at Gethsemane. And when he's there praying, it wasn't easy. And I love this. Listen to this. This is the revelation that God blessed in my heart. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. And the great torment in the garden was on him. And uh, to the point where he began to sweat blood. Somebody says, well, what do you do when it gets that rough? Uh, and someone placed this there. And someone said, what do you do when the going gets tough? And this, this man, it was beautiful when I read this. And this is what happens. The stress of all what he is, Jesus is preparing for this massive as job that he's going to do. He's getting ready to bear the sins. He's getting ready to receive the sins. He's getting ready to... Die on the cross for these people. Hallelujah. But look at the process that Jesus shows here. I love this. And, and, and I want you to take notes. When you're going through hard times, I want you to remember this. When things got heavy for Jesus, things were getting tough for Jesus. When that burden or that load was getting so heavy that Jesus felt like he can't go anymore, that he, he just can't do this. It's, 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 it's like he just can't do it. He turned around and the Bible says, the Bible turns around and it says he prayed. And I love these two things. The Bible says that he fell on his knees, sweat off blood. Have you ever had that time where so much has happened at home? School, life, marriage, that you just want to fall on your knees and you're like, oh gosh, it's too much. It's too hard. Amen. Jesus falls down and he prays and he says, Father, Father, you know, that is the best time to pray. That is the best time just to fall on your knees. Close your eyes, even though your sweat feels, the sweat is the representation of the heaviness of what's happening. And Jesus did something else that I loved. Not only he prayed, but he turned around and he pressed forward. You read that scripture, it says that even when after he prayed, he got up, and as hard as it was and as difficult it was, he said that he pressed forward. Look to your neighbor and tell them, keep pressing forward. Keep pressing keep pressing forward. forward. There are a lot of things that are going to confront you. Those things are designed to paralyze you. Those things are designed to keep you thinking that that's where you're supposed to be all your life. 
But I'm telling you, today I am telling you, there's a press on inside of everybody. There's a press on inside of you. There's a press on inside of me. We've got to keep moving forward. Even though we feel like we're just moving little by little. But I want to say this to you. Praise God that every little step you're taking, at least you're moving away from where you used to be yesterday. At least you're moving away from where you used to be. At least you're keeping stepping forward. But if you stop and you stay there, you get bombarded until it's time for you to throw the towel in and you say, I had enough. Why? Because we sit there. But we need to press on. Look to someone and say, keep pressing on. I'm not going back. When people go through real crazy stuff, uh, let me, I uh, mean, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say it boldly. When people go through real crazy stuff, it's because they keep flirting with their past. It's time to leave it. Look to someone and tell them, stop flirting with your own self. <laughs> the more you flirt with that old self of yours, it comes back. It comes back. We don't want it to come back. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to wrap up. But I'm going to wrap up with this. <laughs> and this is fascinating. I want you to look at this. Let's go. We go back to John 5. Go back to John 5, baby. John chapter 5, verses 14. Let's go to 14. That's where we were going to end at. Now we're going to come in and we're going to finish off. Listen to this. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple. Jesus said to him, you have been made well. Stop sinning so that nothing worse happens to you. In other words, your lifestyle. Listen to this. Capture this. I want you to capture this. Jesus turns around and you have made him well. Stop sinning so that nothing worse happens to you. In other words, listen to this. Your lifestyle didn't prevent your miracle. Yes, come on now. Listen to this. I want you to understand this. His sinful way did not stop the miracle from happening. Hallelujah. No, no, please. Does it mean that I shall keep sinning? No, no. No, no. Sin has the consequence. His sin and the consequence caused him to lay there for 38 years. Right? In his sin, Jesus Christ still came. Gave him the miracle in that sin. But then he turns around and he finishes it off by saying to him, go and sin no more. The reason why I really want to challenge you and encourage you with this is that no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter the heartache and the pain that is drowning inside of you, Jesus can walk in there and do a miracle for you. Hallelujah. But when he has done that miracle for you, I want you to capture this. Jesus turns around and he says to him, go and sin no more for it's going to get worse for you. Amen. Who else Jesus said this? Look at the lady, the prostitute lady in John chapter 8 verses 10 to 13. You read the prostitute lady that came and fell on Jesus' feet. You remember that story? Where the accusers were the priests and the preachers. They came chasing this woman and she fell on Jesus' feet. And when they fell on Jesus' feet, they said, man, we were going to stone her. She's a prostitute. Jesus bends down in the sand. He draws a line. He's writing something and he says this. If you have not sinned, then cast the first stone. When, when, they, when all of them realized that they were all sinners, they left her. But I love what Jesus said to her. He said to her, where are your accusers? She said, oh, uh, 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 sir, they're gone. You know what he says to her at the end? He says, go and sin no more. Amen. Even in her prostitute time, Jesus still did a miracle for her, but reminded her, don't do it again because you'll end up at the same mess again. What about the woman at the well? What about the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman? 
when Jesus comes and meets her at the well, she comes and Jesus said, bring me something to drink. Jesus wanted to exchange with her a new life, a better life, but she was hiding something. She was a sinner. Why is she a sinner? She didn't stay with one man. Amen. But in the middle of her sin, Jesus still came in. A husband, Amen. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Shucks. Jesus said to her, uh, uh, where's your husband? And she, she's like, oh. Uh, which one? <laughs> I got Bob, John, uh, Alvin, Simon, Theodore, all locked up at the back there somewhere. Amen. But the best thing that Jesus did was Jesus turned around, met her in her sinful nature, exchanged with her. Look at what the, the beautifulest thing is. Once she found that Jesus, she moved forward. And you know what happened? She became a light that saved the people that were in her, Amen. In her village. What I'm saying, I'm trying to get something. I'm trying to say to you, don't think that oh, I got to be perfect before I get a miracle. I got to be perfect to receive a miracle. Jesus wants to meet you where you are at. And when you have met Jesus where you are at right now, Man, and look at it. You move forward. You journey forward. You see great things. Jesus is saying to you, don't go back to it. Because if you do go back, now what you uh, were facing the first time, is going to be worse on the second time. Amen. Hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and tell them I'm not going back. Look to your neighbor and tell them I can't go back. Look to your neighbor and tell them I won't go back. I'm moving forward. Everybody say I'm moving forward. Everybody say I'm moving forward. We're moving forward to greater things. We're moving forward to good things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's got something great for you. God's got something good for you. Why don't we stand on our feet?